Within far eastern Chile is a highly unusual volcano known as El Laco, which repeatedly erupted spectacular highly metallic lavas. I am not talking about a thin metallic coating on the lava, but rather large masses of it are completely highly metallic even if you were to slice clean through them. The cause of the metallic nature of what could be described as the world's rarest lava type is the fact that it is composed of up to 97% by weight of the metallic mineral magnetite. Magnetite, as the name implies, is highly magnetic with a composition of 72.36% iron by weight. Not only that, but this lava type could almost be described as one of a kind with its largest component by mass not being silicon dioxide like the lavas found at 1349 of Earth's 1350 active volcanoes, but rather iron oxide. As a result, El Laco's weird lavas are referred to as iron lavas. The mere existence of these iron lavas is quite likely to even surprise many of the geologists in my audience, as most experts only know of lavas with one of three primary components which, in order of decreasing abundance, are silicon dioxide, magnesium oxide, and carbonate minerals. And yet, these iron lavas at El Laco were not placed as a one-off fluke, but rather repeatedly, seven times in fact between 2.2 and 1.6 million years ago. In total, these seven lava flows emplaced 734 million metric tons of metallic lava with an iron ore grade of 50% or higher, a total which is worth 85.8 billion US dollars. Since this ore has more than the 25% general guideline needed of iron to be able to mine a deposit for a profit, this material is being mined with at least 2 million metric tons of production so far. Okay, so we have established that El Laco in its past sometimes produced iron lavas, but could this volcano be a one-off unique entity on Earth? No, as there are other examples of this exact same phenomena, albeit many in far, far older volcanic rocks, such as the vast iron ore deposit at Corona in Sweden, which are 1.6 billion years old, along with far smaller but similar deposits in parts of Mexico, Iran, Nevada, Chile, South Africa, and Argentina. These distinctive deposits are quite strange as typically large economic amounts of magnetite are generally not emplaced in an extrusive but rather intrusive or sedimentary environments. The associated deposits these iron lavas form are classified as iron oxide apatite or IOA deposits, representing a source of iron quite different to the vast banded iron formations iron is generally extracted from. So, how on earth did this iron lava form? The answer is a similar reason to why Tanzania's old Dianulengai volcano has only recently begun erupting nitrocarbonatite lavas, as these perhaps only 1,000 years ago separated from a phonolite composition magma to form a secondary magma chamber with a distinct composition. The same occurred at El Laco, except it involved a body of andesite magma. There, a body of magma was building at 5 kilometers depth, a depth that happened to mark the bottom of the caldera faults created by a prior VEI-6 explosive eruption from this volcano. As magma pooled in this crustal weak spot, it got so enriched in iron oxide that a threshold was reached. This suddenly caused two different composition liquids to separate from one another in a manner similar to adding water to oil. Separated by density, the andesite magma rose while the iron-rich magma sunk to the bottom of the magma chamber. However, as the lighter magma began expanding, it caused increasing pressure to be placed on the heavier iron-rich magma below. This soon caused gas bubbles within the iron magma to expand, which squeezed the magma into existing caldera faults. The aforementioned magma then rose to the surface and erupted, being emplaced on each occasion with an average volume of 138 million cubic meters of material. This extrusive rock contained 80% by volume of regions rich in iron clinopyroxene, which acted as a matrix that surrounded the approximately 20% economic area rich in magnetite which it occurred with. Without the presence of the caldera faults at the bottom of this magma chamber, it is highly unlikely that this iron lava would have ever erupted, hence its rarity worldwide. This does, however, suggest that more such undiscovered deposits may lie hidden underground. 